Catherine? Yes, I'm here, Bante. Okay. Let us begin. Is, are there any questions? Um, I don't see a question in the chat, but I had a question, Bante, uh, okay. about yesterday. Um, yesterday's sutta. So yesterday we discussed uh, the Udayi Sutta. And in this sutta, the Buddha explains that the topic of charnel ground reflection, when it's developed and cultivated by comparison, it leads to the uprooting of the conceit I am. But it also seems to me that this reflection leads one to obtain the insight that the body uh, exists without a person, um, a permanent self, and that the aggregates also don't have a self. Now, the wrong view of self, that's one of the three lower fetters that one should overcome to attain stream entry. But the conceit I am is only overcome when, when one attains arahanship. So, this would then mean that the complete destruction of craving, it's only with the complete destruction of craving that the removal of um, the belief in permanent self culminates into uprooting I am. So the removal of Sakaya Ditti at stream entry is a profound insight into non-self rather than the full experience of non-self because the full experience of non-self can only happen when one has no more greed, hatred, and delusion. Is that correct? That um, Sakaya Ditti is more of a profound insight into non-self and that you can only remove uh, the conceit I am when there is no more craving. All right. When... Uh... Even anagamis have the notion of I am uh, asmi mana. Yes, when one attains full enlightenment, arantut, only then asmi mana will disappear. That is called mana for the, of the higher fetters. Rupa raga, rupa raga, mana. Uddhacha Vidya. Their mana means Asmi mana. So that will be completely destroyed by attainment of uh, Arahanthur. Now, in Sakai Riti is the gross part of I am that is called self, notion of self, uh, permanent, eternal, immutable, unchanging, permanent something. That will disappear when one attains the stream entry. But the notion of I am still lingers in the mind as an uh, underlying tendency, I am, Asmi Mahana. So that will be uh, totally destroyed by attainment of full enlightenment. Remember the Susima Sutin Sanyukta Nikaya. Susima Sutta. <coughs> uh, no, 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 Susima Sutta. This uh, Kemaka Sutta, Kemaka Sutta. In Sanyutta Nigaya. Uh, Venerable Kemaka had attained uh, full enlightenment, uh, attained a uh, uh, never return state. And then he uh, uh, still had this uh, Asmi Mahana. So when uh, several monks questioned him of his uh, Aranthut, he said, I'm not Arahant. I still had this notion of Asmi Mahana. I am. So after many uh, questioning, he gave a simile of uh, Lotus. In the lotus, where there is a fragrance, 
a very good fragrance in the lotus, in the paddle, paddle, to stalk. Yeah. So the answer was, this fragrance is in all over the flower. Similarly, is that I uh, add this notion of I am Vasudhana, but I don't know where it is, but I know that it is there. And finally, he gave another example. Suppose you give your clothes to somebody to wash your clothes, uh, and he uh, wash it, putting, using some detergent, and return the clothes. When you return, when he returns the clothes, the clothes still has the smell of detergent. Then he use uh, he put it in a uh, perfume chamber and take it out. After a while, that detergent smell is gone, and you simply have the perfume smell, which will completely fade away after a while by the wind and air outside. Similarly, once one attained the extreme, <coughs> never return a stage, he still has this notion of Vastimana. When he practices, uh, the Noble Eightfold Path again and again, and you see impermanence perfectly clearly, like the, the day uh, where there is in autumn, where there is no leaves on trees, no cloud in the sky, and when the sun rises, everything is very clear uh, to a person who has good eyesight. Similarly, when one sees as the knowledge of impermanence, this notion of Asmimana vanishes, disappears. <laughs> okay, excuse me, I have this. The next question is um, in the Kachayana Gota Sutta, the Buddha says uh, everything exists that is one extreme. Everything doesn't exist, that is a second extreme. Avoiding these two extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dhamma that it, via the middle. Many Buddhist scholars referring to suttas, such as the Mahasunyata Sutta, point out the concept of emptiness, attempt to develop an internal meditative dwelling of emptiness. Could you please explain these two concepts? So avoid the middle and then emptiness. Okay. Yes, these two extremes, uh, Sasata Ditti and Ucheda Ditti. Everything exists is Sasata. Everything does not exist as is Ucheda. Buddha avoided these two extremes and told them in the middle way. In the he mentioned dependent origination. Uh, and dependent origination is, is uh, not any extreme. When, when this is, this is. When this is not, this is not. And therefore, uh, so, Sunyata, Mahana Sunyata, Sula Chula Sunyata, also Buddha mentioned when such and such thing is there, we say that exists. When such and such thing is not there, that does not exist. Mahana Sunyata, Sula Chula Sunyata, both, uh, act, both agree with dependent origination. So uh, the core taken there is dependent origination. So that's what uh, we have to understand. It is very clearly stated in uh, Sanghita Nikaya 
in the in the guidance on you okay thank you um the second question is you mentioned uh, practicing serenity, you talked about practicing serenity to suppress anger. Could you please explain this a little bit more? How do you practice serenity, equanimity to to, um, to suppress the anger? Okay, serenity is a concentration meditation. When you practice concentration meditation, you definitely have, have to overcome your hindrances. One of the hindrances is anger. Anger can be overcome by practicing metta. You remember I gave a, a discourse one of these in the series of a, a very uh, four people. One is compared to rag, the other is mossy water, other is like uh, drinking uh, water in the house footprint, and the other is like a sick person. So even they are completely appear to be uh, called hopeless, still we have to practice metta. When we practice metta, in spite of all the their uh, problems, difficulties, we always try to find out something good in them. You never find somebody who is hundred percent bad or hundred percent good, except around uh, all other individuals. None of them is hundred percent good, hundred percent bad. And therefore, in any person, there is something good, something you can uh, find uh, uh, in that person good. So, find, try to find out that to practice metta. And then, your anger will be totally uh, disappear. Uh, so, then, Practicing gaining concentration is very easy. This is uh, 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 how you overcome uh, anger by uh, suppression. As I said, there are Tadanga Pahan, that means uh, suppressing by uh, one by one. <coughs> Uh, for instance, anger should be suppressed by not getting angry. The greed should be suspected by being generosity. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, currency should be suppressed by not being conceived by simplicity, with humility, having humble appearance of behavior. Uh, so this is how we suppress them by one by one and then mind becomes very calm and clean as I mentioned the other day when you overcome one of the hindrances you get you become full of joy when you overcome a greed and then you be, will be full of joy when you overcome anger, you will be full of joy. When you overcome sleepiness and drowsiness, you will be full of joy. When you overcome restlessness and worry, you will be full of joy. When you overcome doubt, you will be full of joy. Joyful mind will lead to happiness. Happy mind leads to concentration. That's why Buddha said, Sukhi no chittam samadhyati. Happy person gains concentration. So this is this is a gradual step by step practice in order to overcome anger. Okay, next question. Thank you, Bhante. The next question is 
Could you please explain why sometimes greed and hatred seem to increase as one continues with the practice of mindfulness? So sometimes it feels like you've got more greed and more hatred when you're trying to practice mindfulness. Why is that? What is going on there? Okay, okay. When you practice uh, mindfulness, uh, it is impossible for you to increase the greed and hatred. Rather, the opposite will happen. Perhaps in the name of mindfulness, you are not doing it correctly. When you do mindfulness correctly, uh, you definitely will be able to overcome greed and hatred. These two never go together. Mindfulness and mindfulness on one side, greed and hatred on the other side. These uh, these are diametrically opposite mental factors. So greed will subside, hatred will subside. How greed subsides? When you see impermanence um, in mindfulness practice, you must see uh, impermanence. Greed is impermanence. You can see the danger of impermanence, uh, greed. And you will see impermanence of greed, then slowly, 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 greed will subside. Similarly, when you practice mindfulness, you can see the danger of hatred. And then, in, in mindfulness practice, you see the danger of great uh, hatred. And then, when everything is impermanent, the arises in your mind, why should I uh, harbor hatred? Because the person is impermanent, situation is was impermanent, what the person has done is impermanent, I am impermanent, my situation is impermanent, that per per person uh, has imper is impermanent. So we see impermanence very clearly. In your mindfulness practice, then neither greed nor hatred uh, can uh, sustain. They slowly, slowly fade away. I tell you very with great confidence, you do practice mindfulness correctly. In mindfulness, you must see impermanence. Then everything will be uh, in place as you move on. Okay, next question. Is it possible, though, Bhante, that at the beginning of mindfulness practice, one becomes aware of greed and hatred in oneself that one did not notice before? Perhaps that's what the person means. Like sometimes we are so deluded, we are not even aware that we have greed. And by being mindful, we notice, oh, there is greed in the mind. And then you are able to overcome it. Right. You are aware of... Uh what was you are not aware before. Surely that happens. And that is, uh, of, of course, uh, uh, that is the uh, benefit of the practice of mindfulness. Uh, that uh, certain things that even, uh, you know, very tiny little uh, changes taking place in your uh, body, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness and so forth, they're changing all the time. But we don't know them until we become mindful. When you are mindful, we can notice them more distinctly, clearly. That is true, and that, is, that helps you to intensify your mindfulness practice in order to overcome your uh, greed and hatred. Okay. Okay. The next question is, um, why did Venerable Nandaka, in his first discourse to the 500 bhikkhunis, refer to them all as noble disciples when he said, good, um, good sisters? So it is with a noble disciple uh, uh, who sees it as it actually is with proper wisdom. But some of them did not become stream enters after his second discourse. So why did the Venerable Nandaka refer to refer them all as noble disciples when they were not yet at this stage stream enters? 
as uh, Buddha uh, mentioned in the Nandakovada Sutta, uh, first time he, after giving the sermon, uh, some of them had not attained uh, full enlightenment. Some of them have attained only Sotapanna state. And Nandaka uh, knew that they are all now Aryan uh, sisters, and therefore he thought uh, that would be enough for them. And when they came to the Buddha, they res paid respect, respect to the Buddha, and Buddha, after that, Buddha dismissed them. When Nandaka came, Buddha said, Nandaka, give the same talk tomorrow, next day. <clears throat> so next day, Nandaka repeated the same sermon. And this uh, Bhikkhunis listened to them very carefully, more attentively, and every one of them attained enlightenment. Then, that day they came to the Buddha, paid respect, and Buddha dismissed them. And when Nandaka came and paid respect to the Buddha and dismissed them, then he told other bhikkhus, bhikkhus, yesterday uh, the sermon was like uh, one day before full moon day. One day before full moon day is not full moon day, but it is uh, what you call uh, Vaccine gibbous, no, vaccine crescent, vaccine crescent. And next day is the full moon day. Vaccine crescent is disappeared. Now full moon is, moon is full. So similarly, only now all these bhikkhunis have attained enlightenment. So, the, that is the reason why Buddha seemed to repeat it. And whenever Nandaka did not know that they, well, some of them had not attained full enlightenment. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. Um, then the next question is uh, asking for a reminder about the 18 elements that you mentioned yesterday. Uh, could you please go over them again? Uh, the person says they only remember 16, earth, wind, fire, wa um, earth, wind, water, fire, um, eye and eye consciousness, nose, nose consciousness, tongue, tongue consciousness, ear, uh, ear consciousness, body and body consciousness, mind and mind consciousness. Can you please go over um, these, these uh, 18 elements from okay. yesterday? I think what you said is true. 18 elements plus six elements. There can be uh, 24 elements. Let me repeat the first six elements. Earth, water, fire, air, consciousness, and space. And 18 elements, consciousness repeat in 18 elements also. I, visual objects, I elements, uh, Rupa Dhatu and Chaku Vijnana Dhatu. I elements, form elements, I consciousness elements. E elements, sound elements, E consciousness element. Six, then nose elements, Smell elements, nose consciousness smell. Nine, tongue elements, uh, taste elements, tongue consciousness element. Uh, how many? And then body elements, uh, tangible elements, body consciousness elements, mind elements, dhamma mind object elements, and mind consciousness element. Therefore, six senses has 18 elements plus other four, other six, 24 elements. Now, normally, the famous is these 18 elements. 
Okay. Thank you, Bante. The next question is, um, you have explained that when hindrances and fetters weaken, the mind accesses its luminous nature, which is its natural state. The defilements are adventitious and take root. There is a link to focusing on light to stabilize the mind to let go of fetters. Can you please um, go more into this? Um, the the link um, needed to focus the, on the light and stabilize the, the mind to let go of fetters. Okay. Uh, when the uh, luminous mind, when you remove all the adventitious defilements, what remains is the luminous mind. The luminous mind, you can uh, uh, focus your mind on the luminous mind uh, by uh, repeating it. For instance, when you, as I mentioned yesterday, you become fully aware of uh, uh, the night as night, darkness as darkness, and daytime as daytime. You don't mix these two. Night is night, day is day. Yatha ratin tata diva. Yatha diva tata ratin. That means you don't mix up these two. And you keep these two separately. That is why you can stabilize your luminous state. When it is clear, keep it as it is. Don't mix up with defiled state, advantages, defiled, defiled defilements. Okay? Yes, uh, there is a question that, um, a clarification needed, Bante, about this Nanda Ka Ova Da Sutta. Uh, it is said at the very end, because even the least advanced of those 500 bhikkhunis is a stream enterer. Uh, why were uh, called noble disciples? Where, why uh, were they called noble disciples when they had not yet attained stream entry? Okay. When you call somebody a noble disciple, do you have to have stream entry? According to this sutta, they didn't yet have it. Why were they called noble disciples when they had not yet attained stream entry? Uh, you know, uh, they have not attained stream entry fruition stage. They have attained the stream entry path stage. And therefore, there is one thing is uh, lacking. And yet, they can be called noble disciples, even though they have not attained a full stream entry a fruition stage. You remember Artha Purusha Puggala, the four pairs and eight individuals. Eight individuals are those who attain the stream entry path. Take one person, for instance. When one attains the stream entry path, that is one individual. When one enters, enters the stream entry fruition, that is another individual. Similarly, Second level, third level, fourth level, each level has two. One level is path level, other level is the fusion level. However, even though the person has attained the stream entry path, that person belongs to noble disciples. Although he has not completely attained the stream entry fusion, he has attained stream and path. Stream and the, those who are in the stream and path belong to noble disciple category. Okay. Thank you, Bante. Uh, the next question is, previously you mentioned that one would eventually see that everything is impermanent. What do you do at this point? 
when you when you start seeing that everything is impermanent and everything is irrelevant what how do you go to the next stage when you start seeing this you start seeing impermanence and uh, unsatisfactoriness in right. everything how okay. you get further that's good good question you might remember the formula yadanityam tandukkha whatever is impermanent is unsatisfactory yadanityam tandukkha yandukkha tadanattam whatever is uh, impermanent unsatisfactory is without self tadanattam tadanattam whatever is impermanent is yam kesh what you call yadanityam tandukkha yandukkha tadanattam ஜிஸ்வாமிஷ்ட When you say, I am, no, this is mine, 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 that means you are increasing your greed. Thanna. When you say, I am, I am, I am, you increase your mana. Thanna, mana. When you say, this is myself, you increase your ditti. So you, you destroy all these three. when you see impermanence the anicca dukkha anatta when you see these three your uh, greed conceit and notion of self vanish these are the stages remember the formula yang yada nityam tan dukkham whatever is impermanent that is suffering yandukam tadanattam whatever is dukkha that is not self and therefore so then the conclusion is therefore uh neta mama nesva masmi nevesvata this is not mine neta mama this am not nesva masmi nemeso at this is not myself and that is the whole se- complete sh- uh, uh, results of the first three first three is anicca dukkha anath then neta mama neso mama sarmesu you destroy tanna mana ditti okay thank you bante the next question is could you kindly repeat all the factors to consider to choose a place of seclusion okay the factors to choose seclusion. the right place of seclusion i gave uh, uh, five factors there appa sadda appa nigosa vijanavata manusara asaya padisallana sarupa அப்பசாத்த லெஸ் சவுண்ட் அப்ப நிகோச லெஸ் ஹசல் பசல் கப்பனேஷ் விஜனவாத் நாட் ஹியூமன் மூவ்மெண்ட் ஏ ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் மூவ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் பீங்ஸ் மனுஷரா செய்ய பீங் ஏபிள் டு ஹைட் ஃப்ரம் ஹியூமன் பீங் and what is all on the roof uh suitable for practicing seclusion these are the five qualities appasadda appanigosa vijanavata manusara asaya padisallana saroopa five words i think friends <laughs> our time passed very quickly today and uh, we we practice some meditation okay. uh, let me close this and uh, uh, this is the what you call uh, uh,
Okay. Okay. Let us, uh, let me recite the uh, metta discourse and you listen to it and then when I stop, we meditate together. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, Long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another, as the mother would risk her own life to protect her only child. Even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness. Above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely. Dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to work in the womb. Now let us meditate. We have about 25 minutes.
Finance of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join all race with the wise until the time and attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings ascend in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, friends, this is the end of today's session. And you, oh, I hope you had a good uh, discussion. You answer, ask very good questions. I hope my answers satisfied you. If you have more questions, ask them next week. Now let me end this. Uh, people are waiting there. May all those who are in hospitals, taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses, hospital staff, may they all recover very quickly, return to normal life, and practice Dhamma meditation, understand the nature of Dhamma, nature of life, and uh, attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who are taking care of these people with the compassion, sacrificing their comfort, even risking their life, may they all find time to practice meditation and liberate themselves from suffering. And all those who have lost their loved ones and grieving now, so let them understand the nature of life and be free from grief and try to practice meditation. And that is a very wonderful cure, medicine for grief and try to reduce it and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, above, below. When you say directions, there is no limit. And may they all be well, happy and peaceful. This is a very sincere uh, wish coming from the bottom of my heart. May they all be well, happy and peaceful and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. Okay, now I end this session and see you next week. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you for making time to teach us, Bhante. Thank you. <laughs>